Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Hell on Earth is how sailors who have been involved in fires at sea describe such incidents. Not only do you have ordnance and fuel in the mix, but cramped conditions mean that crews have limited space to escape such a blaze. When they do occur, the U.S. Navy has had to learn how to attack these disasters the hard way. In its day, the USS Forrestal was the lead ship of its class, a supercarrier, but it would also become synonymous with one of the worst maritime disasters. This would become known as the USS Forrestal Incident. On July 29, 1967, while supporting air operations in North Vietnam from the Gulf of Tonkin, the unthinkable happened. Due to the stress of continued air operations, safety measures to ensure it did not happen were changed, and a Zuni rocket was accidentally launched from an F-4 Phantom while on the deck of the carrier. The rocket struck an A-4 Skyhawk, and the resulting fire engulfed other aircraft and set off several 1,000-pound bombs. It took 18 hours to extinguish the blaze, and 134 sailors died. Other shipborne fires have happened since the USS Forrestal incident. The WASP-class amphibious assault ship USS Bonham Richard was commissioned in 1998 to deploy Marines and provide air support. The Benjamin Franklin named ship supported Iraq and global humanitarian efforts. The ship was decommissioned in 2020 after a San Diego fire burned it beyond repair. The loss of the Bonham Richard left the U.S. Navy's amphibious warfare capabilities lacking. What happened exactly? On July 12, 2020, a large fire enveloped the USS Bonham Richard at Naval Base San Diego. The fire started in the lower vehicle storage area and spread, feeding strong flames for over four days. Approximately 60 personnel were treated for injuries, the majority of which were due to heat exhaustion and smoke inhalation. Fire badly damaged 11 of the ship's 14 decks. Arson was suspected as the cause during investigations. Navy chose to demolish the vessel in November 2020, citing substantial damage and making repairs economically prohibitive. Due to the tremendous heat and smoke, the fire on the USS Bonham Richard posed formidable challenges, necessitating the efforts of approximately 400 sailors from 24 local commands, as well as Federal Fire San Diego personnel. They used helicopters to dump water, while tugboats brought seawater to firefighting troops battling flames inside the ship. In the midst of exploding munitions and limited visibility, firefighters in self-contained breathing apparatus and firefighting gear used infrared technology to navigate and extinguish hotspots. Despite these efforts, the fire spread across compartments and burned for about four days before being brought under control. Fortunately, the U.S. Navy learned a lot from accidents, such as those aboard the USS Forrestal and Bonham Richard.
Systems such as the Aqueous Film Forming Foam System were developed. The Aqueous Film Forming Foam System on U.S. Navy aircraft carriers such as the Nimitz class and Ford class is a crucial component for suppressing fires, particularly Class B fires, containing volatile liquids such as jet fuel. The system disperses a foam solution that mixes water and a foam concentrate comprising fluorinated surfactants. This combination is released through discharge outlets strategically located on the flight deck, as well as in hangars and machinery compartments that are prone to fire. The AFFF works by producing a thin aqueous film at the foam water air contact which quickly isolates the fuel source from oxygen and smothers the fire. The foam's water content cools the fuel and surrounding structures, limiting reignition, while the foam blanket reduces the discharge of flammable vapors. When a fire is detected, the system is normally activated manually using a series of controls. Piping networks transport the AFFF mixture to different locations, ensuring quick deployment. The AFFF mixture is also pumped through fire hoses for hose teams. To have the best chance of putting out a fire, sailors must know what they're doing. Their skills are developed through specialized firefighting courses, which are followed by regular firefighting exercises aboard U.S. Navy ships. These exercises simulate various scenarios, including engine room fires and aviation fuel fires on flight decks. Crew members wear flame-resistant hoods, gloves, and proximity suits with self-contained breathing apparatus, much as they would in a real inferno. Drill commanders assign damage control teams and fast response units for prompt deployment. They use the ship's installed firefighting equipment, such as aqueous film forming foam or a halon gas extinguishing system for electrical fires. Teams practice using portable extinguishers, fire hoses, and nozzles to manage and extinguish specific fire sectors. Import emergency teams may also perform dockside drills with local fire departments to simulate cooperative firefighting operations while moored. Communication, command, and control protocols are strictly followed, with post-drill debriefings to analyze performance and ensure weaknesses are found and addressed. These drills improve fire party cohesion, emphasize individual roles, and maintain a high level of readiness, all of which are critical for effective damage control on board Navy vessels. Fires pose a significant threat to the Air Force as well, not so much on aircraft as it does in aircraft hangars. Various systems are utilized by the Air Force to fight fires, including the High Expansion Foam Discharge System. This system is intended for quick fire suppression in aircraft hangars. It produces a high expansion foam blanket by combining air, water, and foam concentrate with specialized generators, resulting in a massive volume of foam. Upon activation, the HEF system quickly floods the hangar, reaching a depth of one meter over the floor.
To be successful, it must surround at least 90% of every aircraft silhouette in the vicinity, creating a dense barrier that smothers and cools the fire within a vital four-minute time frame. This system is highly effective and produces a truly massive amount of foam. This was evident when such a system was triggered accidentally in 2014. In August of that year, the High Expansion Foam Fire Suppression System was accidentally discharged at an Oklahoma National Guard base in Tulsa. The failure immediately filled the aircraft hangar with thick, billowing foam, spilling out hangar bays and openings. This quickly spreading foam swallowed military aircraft and equipment, creating a white foamy environment inside and even flowing outside the hangar. A cascading wave of foam covered nearby areas and even three Black Hawk helicopters parked outside. Even though this was accidental, it demonstrated the system's extensive coverage capabilities. Firefighters must also be able to operate within a highly expansive foam environment. Because of the nature of the foam, a human being can suffocate, especially if they are unconscious and prone to the floor. Because of that, firefighters often conduct rescue training in such an environment. Their priority is locating any survivors who may be trapped in the foam. Thermal imaging cameras are useful for locating personnel in danger. While a team attempts to locate the survivors, other firefighters may be busy extinguishing nearby fires. Once the casualties are located, the firefighters extract them after administering oxygen. Once outside the danger zone, the casualty is examined by medical professionals and treated if necessary. To ensure that its service members are not placed in any unnecessary danger, the U.S. military is actively engaged in finding better and safer alternatives to AFFF. The Naval Research Laboratory is doing research on new firefighting foam formulations as part of the Strategic Environmental Research and Development Program. This study seeks to find alternatives to present fire-suppressing foams, which contain environmentally toxic perfluorinated chemicals. The initiative aims to create effective, less hazardous alternatives that meet high firefighting performance standards. These alternative foams are evaluated for their extinguishing capabilities, resistance to reignition, and environmental impact. Guaranteeing that future firefighting tactics aboard naval assets are both safe and environmentally responsible. Since the USS Forrestal incident, the U.S. Navy's firefighting systems and training for shipborne fires have advanced significantly. A small spark can result in significant loss of life and equipment. Firefighting is performed not only in the U.S. Navy, but in all branches of the United States military to ensure that flames do not represent the same threat as they once did. Let's hope disasters such as aboard the USS Forrestal never occur at quite that scale again. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.